Okay, so my name is Jay Bessel, I'm the head buyer of the local drop. I'm here with Frank, who's looking very concerned because I've forced him just on a spur of the moment to sit down and open a bottle of wine for Hi us. Guys. <laughs> um, we're doing a special box on campaign, so I'm going to ask Frank if he wants to open this up or start chit chat about a few things. We're going to decant this particular wine. We're going to talk about it in a moment, but it's going to need a bit of air. But first things first, let's talk about the box that we put together. This box is based on Campania solely, and we've got some little left to center things. There's some whites and there's some reds. The wine that Frank's opening at the moment is the beast. It's the big red one. It's going to need decanting, it's going to need time. But first of all, the box. So, I'm going to cruise through uh, three different whites from different areas. Inside, there's a little set of cards, and they look something like this. And they've got a little bit of information which is tucked inside. And when you unwrap it, you'll find a little parcel of food as well. Campania is being famous for the obviously Vesuvius, the exploding, erupting volcano, and the consequences after. Also grows all the ingredients to make wonderful food, particularly this parcel. You've got a top grade parcel. And there's also going to be a secret little recipe in there as something that's special, very easy to throw together, but it's going to work really well with the wines. Inside of the box also there's a sheet and it's got a map and it's got information so you can sort of break down where these areas are. So as you look at Campania itself and you travel through, you've got a volcano, you've got a series of elevated zones and then sub-regions within it and these wines are selected from those areas. And there's even a wine which is about 45k out from uh, Napoli. Uh, that wine is in the middle of nowhere effectively, I think called Casavecchia. But you'll get to that in the box when you get down. So Frank's going to be kind enough to pour a little bit of this in the decanter and um, we'll see if we can get some air into it to start and we'll have a little taste. How's it called? Nice. Smells like I want to drink. <laughs> so Frank's going to pop it in and we're going to have a little splash and have a taste. Um, when the box arrives here, it's going to look like this. It's going to look similar to some of the boxes you've seen before, but of course this is a monthly special. So in the future we perceive ourselves doing, we've got a little cunning list of places we'd like to visit. So it's almost like you're having a little random act of holiday each time when you go back and have a look at the new boxes. So stay in touch and we'll talk to you about a few upcoming boxes from different regions. Look at the colour of this, 2011. 2011 and it looks <laughs> vibrant and really, yeah. Really intense. I guess these wines, I think a lot of people refer to them as sort of the Barolo of the South. Why do you think that would be? I reckon because although they taste completely different, yeah. I think that they're built in, a, in the same way, the structure of the of the grape and yep. the backbone to the wines are similar. Yeah. The acidity, the tannin, um, the power, yeah. the richness, um, they resemble each other. Like I said, they taste, to me, they taste completely like two different wines. Yeah. But the Alianico, it's just packed with power. Great, great, great richness, great tannin, great structure, great acidity. It's a, just a big, big wine. Big wine great yeah. wine to be enjoyed in small quantities with some great food, um, yeah. slowly, yeah. It's absolutely. almost like you want to sit back and meditate whilst you're having it. Something roasted, slow yeah. cooked, and you can just eat Definitely. your way through. This is not, I've just come home from work, it's five o'clock or 5.30 on a Friday, not I'll just smash out an easy bottle of that kind of mm. stuff. You're gonna be good, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And life expectancy of these wines, what do you think? Is it the same as Barolo? Are you looking at years and years? From, from my experience, yeah. Um, yeah, I can see it aging beautifully between 10 and 25 years yeah. quite easily. Maybe longer if stored properly and if you're lucky enough to have a great cellar, yeah. you know, maybe longer. Maybe shorter if you like wine as much as I do. <laughs> There's um, not much chance of it actually sticking around too long in Probably cellar. not, yeah. probably not. Yeah. But, um, but uh, definitely will age well. It definitely is the kind of wine that you'll, it's a special wine. Yeah, certainly. Um, so save it. Save it for, for an occasion when you're going to share it with someone uh, pretty special that yep. is really going to enjoy and appreciate wine. Yes, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, alcohol contact, 14.5%. You can tell there's some heat in there. They're lucky because it's so elevated. So they're getting the sunshine. Everything is getting rap rapidly ripened to the right level, but it's cool enough there that they're getting the cool nights. And that's the goal, I guess, for these yep. guys, isn't it? Because yep. you're off the coast and you're up high. So that sunlight is belting in there. Yep. Cool little microclimates can ripen everything properly, so it's actually yeah. the job. Yeah. Let's have a taste. It smells fantastic. Mm. Mm. Just to put it into context, it's fairly early in the morning right now, but it actually does taste good. That could be terrifying from my perspective and maybe from yours, but 
It does need that. It's roasted meats and those concentration. It's all there. I think it's Sydney for counting now for another two hours. We'll come back yeah, to it. That's a good wine. That's, that's a really good wine. It's terrific. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers.